Three years ago, we started living on a small mono hole. We had no experience. It was scary, exciting, hot, cold, amazing, and miserable. About a year ago, we bought this old catamaran, and since then, it's been scary, exciting, hot, cold, amazing, and miserable. Last week, we sailed to the birthplace of famous Napoleon. And this week, we sailed towards the infamous Bouche de Bonifacio. Enjoy. Boom. We've come to the little marina in Ajaxio to fill up water. Came to the office and asked them uh, how much and what, what, what do we do? He said it's completely free, just come to this pontoon. We should be staring to this pontoon, but we're, we've just come in pirate style. And we feel bad, that's why we're kind of rushing. We've washed the boat, we've filled it up. And the plan is to go about 20 miles down the coast and then again tomorrow we're going to do something like 30 or 40 miles going through the Bouche de Bonifacio, which is like, well, it's a big bottleneck. Wind just gets forced through through there. Today I fear that it's going to be light winds in the wrong direction, but we'll see. We're close hauled, tacking out of this big bay and hoping that we can get to our destination, which as the crow flies or the quickest way, it's 18 miles. Doing about 3.5 knots, close hauled in the wrong direction. Hopefully we can get there before dark. So the forecast was for a perfect beam reach to our destination, but uh, that's not materialized. I think what happens is the sea breeze conditions, so the air getting sucked into the land during the day as the land heats up, that just overpowers any forecast wind. So it's, it's, a, it's a wonder why they don't forecast it. The wind has arrived! We've been sailing for the last 12 nautical miles. We've done 12 miles? 12.6 actually. Oh, that's overall. Uh, we've been tacking out of the channel. As we've got out of the channel or the bay, the wind has come at the forecast direction. Um, we're flying at 5 knots ish. Broad reach now, how about that? Very, very fast. 5.2 knots. Yes. So this is our camera setup and our broken gimbal, which is not working of course, but if I go like this. So we've arrived at this absolutely beautiful little spot. Oh, it might even warrant a second night here, maybe. It's so calm and very green, beautiful. Now to take Yoshi for a walk. What you doing? I managed to pick up some cheap wing coiling stuff in Ajaxio off Le Bon Coin, which is the second hand website in France. And we, and we see people in anchorages all the time doing this sort of stuff. I wanted to give it a try. Apparently it's really, really difficult. We've essentially got a board and a foil and a wing and you have to harness the wind to try and get onto the foil and basically board around the anchorage. We were supposed to sail down to kind of close to Bonifacio. We might, I think we'll probably go a little bit later just because the conditions are perfect. But I've never tried this before and it's supposed to be really really hard and can take days and days to manage to get up onto the foil so but the conditions seem good there's a chance that i might be able to do it
got your toy. Got my little toy, got my little wind toy thing. I'm gonna fall over so much. This is gonna be. I'm gonna be pretty embarrassing for the first few days of this. Maybe you shouldn't be wearing sunglasses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the first case. <laughs> Is it difficult? Uh, definitely a lot of variables to consider. There just ain't much wind, and he's drifting further and further away. I think he's gonna get it very soon. He's just behind that red boy. <laughs> Aww. It's gonna take a lot of hard work before it starts to be fun, I think. Yay! Is he stand up? Whoa! Well done. Ah! Oh. Whoa. Whoa! I saw you ripped your pants. What? <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's loads of nudists around here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Loads of wind now. Before there wasn't enough wind, really. Get ready for some epic fails. Nice. <sighs> it's good though, it's fun. Nice. I, I like that it's like difficult to pick up. If it's too easy, it just gets boring. Uh, so it's gonna like take me a few weeks to, a few weeks to get good at it. Yeah, if we leave in like an hour or something, then it'll be like a four hour sail. Okay. Arrive at, at nine. Okay. It's nice to break up the sails a bit so it's not just like a 10 hour. So I feel like a 10 hour day sail is more tiring than a 24 hour. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, true. Are you ready to meet the latest crew member on Wildling Sailing? Here it is! It's the Anchor 521 Portable Powerhouse. 256 watts of power in this tiny dinky package. Small but mighty. And also very durable as well. Drop proof. So the batteries inside are in an encased little enclosure. So if you didn't drop it, or if Nadiana was to drop it when I threw it to her, it'd be okay. Oi! It also has a built-in inverter, which you can charge AC appliances up to 200 watts. Oi! Oi! It also has USB-C up to 60 watts charging and to charge other devices and two USB-A's and also the classic car socket. This is really great for us, for outside, we can stick it there, have our iPad for navigation, plug it in and perfect. Nadiana. And it has a built-in light. Da -da! And when we have our guests, it's perfect because we don't have any other lights in here and they can use it for their laptop or charge their phone so all power for guests sorted so you have a really nice clear display here it tells you how much power you're taking and how long you've got 23 watts 6.7 hours you can also load this thing up up to 200 watts little dinky speaker handheld vhf and at this point, we're only sucking 30 watts, so five and a half hours. This dinky but mighty little powerhouse is great. Check it out in the link down in the description and maybe get one for yourself too. This is our a cappella song called Close Hold Again. Two, three, four. Close hold again. Close hold again. Louder, please. Close hold again. 
So it's really difficult to catch on camera, but there's a big swell, I think, from the Mistral a couple of days ago. It means that we're only moving at about 2.2 knots, which is quite slow for sailing. We were measuring how fast we can row in the dinghy, and we managed to get up to something like 2.5 knots, so it's not too bad. I always thought two knots was frustrating, three knots is a getting their pace, but actually two knots is sort of a getting their pace. You can do 20 miles in 10 hours. In these sort of swells in this catamaran, it's, it's quite painful, but Nadiana's doing well, she's not seasick. She's loving it, we're listening to a bit of Japanese post-rock. Just trying to steer clear of some rocks over there. sailing cheeky Very slow sail today. Well, we average two point something. <laughs> no way, we averaged over two knots. I think. We, yeah, we, we've been hitting it. We've been doing a steady three for the last two hours. And we were doing one point five for so long. Yeah. Oh because yeah. Because we're going into the swell. The swell was just killing us. Slow sails makes you feel like time goes past so fast. So we're coming in now to a cheeky little anchorage. Not many people there. Quite a big westerly swell and it says that this anchorage is open to the west so we'll see if it's all right. If we took right up into the corner we can be really cheeky. But usually we're really cheeky with anchorages. We get right into the corner. We can get in quite shallow. I think we're less than one meter draft. I probably should check exactly how deep the boat is, but I'm pretty sure it's less than a metre. Did I tell you, Corsica, absolutely beautiful. The mountains are absolutely delightful. It makes navigation quite difficult because there's a lot of land breezes, a lot of sea breezes, a lot of wind getting funnelled and high gusts. Days where the forecasts are inaccurate. These but rocks look different. These rocks look flipping beautiful. I tell you what, it's a geologist's wet dream, Corsica. Can you say that? It's a bit much, isn't it? for an anchor under sail. I've put the main down and the mizzen terribly, but quickly. We've got the jib. worked out well we didn't need to use the engine because four liters per hour that is uh, eight euros per hour in every single anchorage 
there's a solitary seagull who just waits at the back of the boat when you're having your tea. I was saying to Nadjahana last night, I think this is probably the wildest, but I mean kind of the most unmolested place that we've sailed to. It's completely wild. There's loads of different wildflowers. Not that I really know much about that, but uh, you can just see it. You don't need to know much. You can just see it on the beach. I think it's maybe just a very difficult place to access by car, quite far away out of everything. No supermarkets close by. <laughs> For miles. For miles. Yeah. And we're pretty low on stock, so yeah, we'll spend the day here, I think, and then move on down to Sardinia tomorrow. But oh, it's beautiful here. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> I think it's a beetle. Mark spent the whole day <laughs> out foiling and I think he's got it, it's pretty fast. Nice! What are you looking goofy for? My dog. Dog? What have you made us? A yogurt cake with like no sugar and no egg and no real yogurt. Just whatever scrap we have left. And some corn flour instead of uh, proper all-purpose flour. All-purpose flour. How is it? Very starchy. Yeah. I don't have anything to complain about when we are in this wildness and we still have like a little bit of cake. <laughs> <laughs> we may have all the nature but uh, Nadiana has not seen Breaking Bad yet so we're re-watching the whole thing. <laughs> while eating cake. Living the dream. No. It's a bad boy. Wall. Wall? Mo. Mo. Wall mo. Scree. Scree? Ve. Ve. Learning Italiano. Italiano. Preparing for Sardinia and Italy. It, it's, it's a different, difficult lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> Just as I'm getting used to Spanish, <laughs> we're back to France and then just kept saying hola to people. <laughs> <laughs> to French people. Yeah. And then just as we're gonna remember our poor French, we're getting to Italy. And I bet you, just as we got used to saying hello and bye in Italian, we're off to Greece. <laughs> Very difficult. It's a hard life. It's a hard life. So we're sailing out of the anchorage and heading on to Sardinia. It's quite light now, about nine knots, but we're going to go through the infamous Bouche de Bonifacio which is a bottleneck for some pretty high winds and it's going to pick up to mid-twenties later on in the day. We're going about 30 miles, so 
I put in quite a uh, reserved estimate of three knots average speed just because of the last few sails, but I think it's going to be more like four, potentially five, depending on how much the wind picks up. But it's going to be really nice, really funky going through 30 odd miles and we'll go to a little hideout spot. It's going to be very strong winds coming from the west over the next few days and we're going to Sardinia to meet our friend Charlie. So I met Charlie in Thailand when I was teaching English there so it's going to be nice catching up with him because we just don't see enough of each other. It's not always easy so he's coming, that's going to be nice. <laughs> Trying to get the telltales flapping. Today's lure will be this very old looking mackerel. I'm just going to put it out the back just on the rod. And look at that, it's an old Rapala. Rapala make good lures, so this is a classic. This must be pretty old. Not really had much look from the fishing rod off the back, but because uh, we're quite close to the coast, I'm not sure the hand line is the best way to go, so. So, Captain, tell us about your watch. What watch? What a joker. Mommy's joke. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing 2.5 to 3 knots downwind, and we just jibed, and right now we're aiming straight towards the destination around 3 knots of 7 knots of wind. So, we're going to sail slowly. But surely the wind's gonna pick up a lot over the next few hours, so three knots is good. We'll be getting six probably later. We took down the main sail because uh, it was just shadowing the jib, so we've just got jib and jigger. Yeah, and uh, I can testify that even after we took down the main sail, the speed did not change. Yeah, so it was useless. Find out in next week's video if we made it through the infamous bush. Obviously, we made it. But it did get fun a little bit. Quite nice though. I liked it. Thanks for watching this week. And thank you especially for people who go onto our coffee page and PayPal for supporting our video. Thank you very much. And see you next time. Okay. Is that going to be good? That's good.